This year saw the seventh provincial premier's conference taking place in Gizo, Western Province. The Ramsey's special coordinator, Nicholas Coppel, saw this as an opportunity to talk transition with the provincial premiers. Uh, I appreciate very much the opportunity you give me today to give you an update on what Ramsey is doing, what Ramsey has done, and what Ramsey is planning to do in the next four years. There's been a lot of um, misreporting in the media, so I really appreciate this opportunity to give you some correct information about what's, what's happening. Ramsey is a mission which came into the Solomon Islands in 2003 and had a, had a particular shape and a particular structure. It's been changing almost every year since then. And so what we're doing now is really just continuing that process of change, reflecting the progress that's been made and adapting it so that the model of assistance that's being provided is appropriate for the circumstances that the country is now in, which are very different from the circumstances that we faced in 2003. Now that situation has changed very much, and so too has Ramsey. One of the reasons the situation has changed is that the institutions of the Solomon Islands government have been, in many areas, rebuilt. If we take the example of the prison service, for example, Correctional Services Solomon Islands. As I mentioned, when Ramsey first arrived, uh, they were not functioning as prisons as we know it, in terms of keeping prisoners contained within their, their walls. We had, at the outset of Ramsey, over 50 people working in the prison service from top to bottom. They weren't there doing advice or capacity building. No, they were running the prison service because the prison service was so um, weakened during that period. Of course, um, things have much improved. And as we uh, re regained control of the situation, it was that possible to, to start building up the capacity of the Correctional Services Solomon Islands. And indeed, as that's happened, Ramsey's been able to step back. So several years ago, a Solomon Islander was appointed the Commissioner of the Correctional Services um, Solomon Islands. Uh, and today, we do not have, Ramsey does not have one person in line in the Correctional Services. We have eight people who are there as advisors, but they're not there do the doing work. That all the doing is being done by Solomon Island uh, officials. And that's the way it should be. That's how you measure progress. That's the country coming back onto its feet. That's just one example. In the area of policing, which is the area of Ramsey that most people are interested in, when, so when Ramsey first arrived, the Ramsey police were doing patrols, they were making arrests, uh, and they were working as a police force in Solomon Islands. Now, for a number of years, we've stepped back from that as the Solomon Islands police force has built up its capacity. And today, our main focus is on, on training the Solomon Islands Police Force. I say the main focus because that's not the only thing we do. The Royal Solomon Islands Police Force today is still uh, an unarmed police force. So if there's any incident that requires the use of a firearm, then uh, Ramsey Police uh, get involved. At, uh, at Henderson Airport, at international airports, under international aviation security requirements, there is a need under those treaties for an armed presence. That's what the world requires of all international airports. So we provide that service for Solomon Islands because the Royal Solomon Islands Police Force does not have a firearm. Um, if there's a public disorder incident, which most people call a riot, which really gets out of control and needs um, the use of firearms, um, we have that capacity as well. All those things that we're doing in policing, we will continue to do for the next four years. Ramsey police are staying in Solomon Islands for the next four years. And that includes the armed capability of the uh, Ramsey's participating police force. Now, there have been some reports in the newspaper of Ramsey leaving and people are getting worried about security. Well, please, you're hearing it from me, the special coordinator of Ramsey. Ramsey's participating police force are remaining in Solomon Islands for the next four years. And I've had uh, a decision in, in Australia which funds Ramsey predominantly uh, for the next four years that the money is there. So I can tell you that with, with confidence. So why are we getting these misreports? Well, Ramsey also has soldiers in Solomon Islands who are different from police. And the soldiers are leaving. 
So we currently have troops, soldiers from Australia and from Tonga, and they will be finishing their duties at the end of June and then leaving over um, towards the end of July, early August. So currently there's about 170 soldiers in, in um, all based in uh, Henderson, that's outside of Honiara at the GBR, and those soldiers will be leaving. We haven't used those soldiers in an operation since 2006 because the first response is always a policing response. Firstly, it's the Royal Solomon Islands Police Force. If they need backup, it's Ramsey's Police Force. And it's only if our Ramsey police feel the situation is getting even more out of control that we would use the, the soldiers. But we haven't had to do that since 2006. So for the last seven years, they haven't been there using all that firepower. They're not there to provide the security. Security is provided by the police force. That's the job of a police force. Armies are mainly for external security, fighting outside enemies. So it's much more appropriate that we use a police force uh, to produce law and order. So I'm not worried at all when the soldiers leave. I'm very confident that the quality that we now have in the Royal Solomon Islands Police Force, combined with the ongoing support of Ramsey's police force, will be sufficient to deal with any situation that might happen. The reason we, we can withdraw the soldiers but we want to keep the police is there is still, within the Royal Solomon Islands Police Force, a few areas that continue to need assistance. We recognize that. We've done a lot of good work in building up their ability to deal with a riot. They are now very highly trained in, in controlling a riot situation and they're all very highly equipped as well. And the Solomon Islands government, the cabinet, has also authorized them to use um, tear gas if in a riot if that's necessary. They haven't done that yet because we haven't had a riot, fortunately. Um, but should such a situation happen, in, particularly in Honiara, um, they are ready, they are trained, and they are equipped to deal with it. That's the Royal Solomon Islands Police Force. If they need help, we are there to help them as well. But there is still work to be done, particularly, I think, in delivering uh, policing services into the provinces. We still feel that um, uh, it's a difficult job, but this, that, that there is room for improvement there. There is also room for improvement in the management of the Royal Solomon Islands Police Force. By management, I mean what often is called the back room functions. Human resources, information technology, finance, logistics, those things that help bring that force together and that keep it functioning well. It's an organization of 1,200 police officers. That's a large management job, a very large management job. It needs professional management. And it's clear that uh, there is further work to be done there. A part of the problem has been, uh, after the period of the tensions, the, which, in which many of the Solomon Islands Police Force were implicated in, a large number uh, left the force. In fact, 60% of the police force has left since 2003. That means with, there's been a lot of recruitment going on of, of cadets, but they are fairly junior and it takes time to build up that experience before they can take up management positions. So there's still, he's got a young force, it's a very well-trained force, they're very enthusiastic, they're very capable, but at the more the management level, um, there is a need for, for more, more growth, more, more capacity building and more training. And Ramsey is going to focus on that in the next four years. What you're probably most interested in is, um, well, what's it going to mean for the provinces? You'll be very aware that we have withdrawn the Ramsey police officers from all the provinces except from here in, in Gizo uh, and Alki. Ramsey police and all the other provinces have withdrawn. But we haven't ended our assistance to the provinces. The focus that we have today is in building up the capacity of the provincial police commanders, providing logistical support to those police stations. Uh, last year we uh, gifted on a one-for-one -one basis quite a number of boats, and uh, we conti we'll continue with that program this year. One-for-one one is that means for every one which uh, the Solomon Islands government provides, we will match with a second one, so doubling the purchase. More needs to be done there. There needs to be more support for the, for the police officers in the provinces so that they can go about their, their patrols and do their business. We understand that. 
Communication back to headquarters is also very important. Two way. One, if there's a problem, that they can communicate it. But also so that headquarters can give instructions and can get a better understanding of what's happening in the province. So we, we are installing, and it's already rolled out in quite a number of provinces, uh, improved communi radio communications, a dedicated communications network back to Rove. This communications network also allows for data transmission. So they can be sending in police reports. And it's also um, uh, restricted so it doesn't get access from outside. That's important. We're also doing what we call provincial visits, a mentoring program, so that the PPCs visited um, a number of times through the course of the year. They can discuss issues, discuss problems, and uh, we can help develop, understand uh, solutions to those issues um, so that the police um, commander in the provinces is um, able to respond to those situations. That is going to continue over the next few years. So there still is that need to strengthen provincial policing. Ramsey's special coordinator, Nicholas Coppel, briefing the provincial premiers and the mayor of the Honiara City Council on the transition of Ramsey.